This has been a really good brief, probably one of the best weeks ever. Back alley flash performed for standing room only crowds one all week. I couldn't even invite anyone else to come watch. Gaz had dollar signs in his eyes. This is an incredible start for my band. I even managed to have a great Christmas. I managed to sneak Isabella into my last show right before Christmas. <laughs> Afterwards, we went out to one of my favorite drives and just talked for hours. Heck, we rang Chris in Christmas around 3 a.m., which is the best time to celebrate. Okay, so what's this? College farm. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll just keep it like this, and I'll change it, like, later if I don't like it through this week. Nothing good lasts forever, I guess. Time to get back to school. Ugh. I have a few new classes this quarter, and a few continuations from last quarter. The continuations, luckily, are being taught by some of the same professors, so I don't have to learn new names this quarter. I even see a familiar faces in the class. It looks like Anne is in here with me. We share a quick nod as we get seated next to each other. I also notice a vaguely familiar face. A red-haired girl I can feel like I've seen around before. I forget her voice, too. Anne notices me and follows my gaze. Oh, looks like Roxanne got into this class as well, huh? Oh gosh, I forgot his voice too. Before I can ask more, the professor strides into the room and throws his notes back on the table in front of him. Okay, what voice can I give the professor this time? Okay. Welcome back to all you who didn't block out of 101. You're not completely brain dead. Welcome to the class where you actually get started. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, she's like a monster ready to attack. Although I'll be lecturing you, and you will be, there will be homework, the majority of your grades this quarter is going to come from a paper due at the end of class. <laughs> this is an evil teacher, dang. <laughs> oh my gosh, why? Why did I give him this voice? Oh, and I remembered Roxanne's voice, so... I can do her voice right. Of course, I'll be expecting your paper to be inclusive to the topics we discussed in class. Though don't think you can skip my class all quarter and BS your way through a grade 8 paper. Crap, that was half my plan. That being said, as some of you know, I am a tenured professor here. Which means I can indulge in more advanced classroom techniques. If you'd like to show me more about it, come see me after class for an extra credit excitement. Otherwise, I'll in your books. I am planning on going slowly this quarter. Don't so try to stay away before we're out there. <laughs> okay, okay, that hurt my throat. Let me take a drink of water. <laughs> Dang, that voice. Woo. The professor drones out for the rest of class, getting right into the new quarter's lessons. By the time class is done, I've already got page notes to look over tonight. I don't know what the event is. And by my notes, I mean a pile of unreadable dribble. Of course. Ugh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to take actually paying attention in class. Maybe I should see what the professor offer is. I might be able to scam my way out of doing any real work this quarter. I pack up my things along with the other students, but instead of heading out the door, I head over to the professor. Hey, Max. Oh, wait, no, that's Sally's voice. Hey, Max. And surprised to see you in this class. I transferred the over this quarter. Actually, I'd heard the professor was interesting. Yes, he's very interesting with a voice like that. <laughs> oh, whoops. Okay. Well, he's a college professor. What's the worst he could do? Please, I'm a tenured professor! <laughs> <laughs> I could order you to fight to the death, and the worst I'd get from the dean is a sigh and a frown, and I'll keep apologizing for my sighing. The professor looks over the volunteers. Other than Anne, I see a few other classmates I recognize around campus. Says that I suppose I should have expected more. The professor looks at me with an obvious scorn in his eyes. 
All right, I know some of you here are looking to skate out of my class on Easy Street. Pretty sure he looked at me when he said that. Pretty sure he's also right. And there's no way I'm going to let you do with so without a little entertainment for me. Therefore, what I'm proposing is simple. You're going to get together in groups. There are enough of you here to make three groups of two. Go ahead, take a few moments and choose your partner. I'll look up another and stop left the stones later. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we all look at each other for a few moments. Anne and I look at each other, shrugging our soldiers. Suddenly, the red-haired students I could swear I met before comes over to me. Hello again, Max. I didn't think I'd see you in this class. Oh yeah, Roxanne, right? You were at the Halloween party. Yes, we only spoke briefly. Nice to see you again. You as well, Max. I was actually wondering if you would like to be my partner for this activity. Oh, I was thinking I'd pair up with my friend there. Anne looks between Roxanne and me. Yeah, I thought we'd partner up. Roxanne looks over at Anne for a moment, as though she's sizing them up. I think you will find me superior to the partner for this endeavor. Oh, stop being such a skank. Wait, what? Do you know that the professor is on about? I'm a pretty good student, you know. No, I don't know what the proposed lesson is. However, I've seen what Anne is capable of, and I'm simply better. What? I think it would be obvious that I would make for a better partner. Come on, Max. Let's go on with the lesson. I'm going with Anne, because I don't know this girl, and she seems like a skank. So, yeah. I do love when the ladies fight over me. I'm just so awesome. Sorry, Roxanne, but Anne lives with me, which makes it much more convenient, you know? Plus, you were a bit rude there. I was merely... <laughs> that changed. I was merely stating facts. If you chose to ignore them, it's your loss. Roxanne walks over to the other students, I guess making her case to them. Anne smiles at me, mouthing a silent thank you while staring daggers at Ro Roxanne. Okay, are we all sorted? Good, here's how it works, kiddies. You partner and you are study buddies. <laughs> Your grades are intertwined. Once all the assignments are turned in and the tests are done, you'll both get the average of your two grades. However, if one of you gets tired of all the working, just come to me and ask for the answers to the final. I'll give them to you. <coughs> you'll pass this class and you won't have to do any other work. Here's the rub. If you come to me and the other doesn't, then the one who didn't ask for the answers will automatically fail the class. But if you both come to me, you get C's. Simple as that. Get your work together, and I hope you're smart enough to do it. <coughs> I can't do this with my throat. My throat's so sore. Do you pray that your partner didn't decide to cheat? Do you think take your C's and call it a day? Chew on that! Now get out of my class! I have things to do! Evil teacher. And with that, Professor Taske just walking away from us. Most of us are looking googled eyed at each other. What did we just see? Oh, what the hell was that about? I think I just got an easy passing grade for this class. Either way, I guess I'll have to keep an eye on Anne. So early in the new quarter, and I've already gotten a ton of work to do. It's ridiculous. My music's finally starting to get somewhere, and then they saddle me with so much homework, I'll never leave the house again. Which is exactly why I made my way over to the cafe. Nothing says I have to stay cooped up while I do a bit of studying. Is that going to be it for you? This will be fine. Thanks, Isabella. Come back later, and I'll make sure I'll give you a tip. No need, I've already got one, and don't hit on the waitress. She's almost certainly had it done often, and better. Really? She winks at me, and she sways away from me. Tease that she is. I've got my guitar on me, and figure it won't hurt to strum a bit while I eat before I start my homework. I'm plucking a few chords quietly when the door opens and one of my classmates walks in. Oh gosh, I don't know her voice either. That's all, hey! I didn't know you'd be over here. 
Okay, I can't think of another voice after doing that professor's voice. So, I'm just gonna give her this voice. Oh, hey, Carmen. Already have work to do. Can you believe it? I know, right? Carmen takes a seat across from me, slinging her bag down next to her. There are enough books that it lands heavily. Oh my gosh! Okay, this is better. Oh my gosh, is that your guitar? I, uh, I caught your show at Gaz's place over the holiday break. You were fantastic. Oh really? That's great. Glad you enjoyed. We had a blast playing. Oh yeah, I couldn't believe how much fun your show was. I really enjoyed it a lot. I actually told all my friends. We all came back to see you this <laughs> <laughs> to the next night. Wow, two shows? I guess you're my biggest fan, huh? I give her a smooth wink and her cheeks redden a bit. I can't believe I've got fans coming out of the woodwork on Ray. I mean, I've already got the cute girls asking for my autograph. How long have you guys been doing a show like that? Oh, you know, a while. I mean, we haven't exactly hit it big yet, but we're up in com and comers. Yeah, you guys got the... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you guys got the talent to go for. From your lips, cutie. Oh! Carmen's got a pretty cute giggle. Well, aren't you two getting along famously? Oh, hey, Isabella. Do you know Carmen? She's one of my classmates. Carmen, Isabella, one of my roommates. Nice to meet you, Isabella. I've seen you come in here a few times. Nice to meet you formally. Get you anything? Just a black coffee, please. Sure thing. Isabella eyes Carmen a little cautiously as she goes off to get the coffee. Carmen and I chat for a bit more. Carmen seems really interested in what I've been up to. She gets really excited as we chat. We're both shocked as Isabella thumps the coffee down on the table. Careful, Max. Carmen here might try to kidnap you at this rate. What does poke fun mean? I think that means make fun of them. Uh-oh, you think I've got a stalker on my hands here? Maybe you should protect me, huh, Isabella? What? I would never. I was just... Oh, please. Who would want to take away from your skanky ass? Ooh, she'll be probably just cut you and run. Nah, she hasn't got the guts. What? I can't help but start laughing. Sorry, Carmen. Carmen, Isabel is joking. I was just teasing, hon. Don't worry. He's the jackass who decided to be a dick about it. Um, okay. <sighs> Don't pay attention. Any attention to him. He's just a jerk. Isabel rolls her eyes at me as frustratedly and walks away. What? I went along with your joke. What's wrong? <laughs> Carmen starts to breathe again, not looking nearly as flustered. We eat and study with each other for a bit longer, enjoying each other's company before she decides to pack it and head out. I should probably get going as well as I scoot out the door behind her. We wave goodbye as we go our separate ways. I'm a little surprised the house is so quiet. I know it's only the first week back, but I was half expecting a big party tonight or something. I wander out of my room to grab a quick snack. I guess it's going to be a quiet night. What? No, that's stupid. We're going to watch my show. My movie is not- <coughs> Ooh. Ooh. My movie. <laughs> After all these voices, my throat is so sore. Oh my gosh. Get another drink of water. Oh. My movie is not stupid. It is fantastic. I think your movie is might be the one that is steeped in stupidity. Ah, there it is. I knew the Latin House crew wouldn't let me down. I head downstairs and sneak past the couch towards the kitchen. It looks like Sally, Isabel, and Rakesh are arguing over what to watch on the big screen tonight. I make my way into the kitchen for a light night, late night, for that light snack, <laughs> while I debate if I want to join in or not. Let's join it in. <laughs> as much as I am curious about so and so's evil twin brother and the mistress they share, I think my film will make much better watching. Was that sarcastic, Rakesh? Are you being sarcastic? 
Oh yes, I learned about it yesterday specifically so I should could use when referring to shows you like. Again, you are learning all the wrong things from America, my friend. All right, all right, you two. Knock it off before someone throws a punch. Oh, hey, Max. Both of these g guys gave up on listening to me 30 minutes ago. Well, luckily for you, ladies, I was b bored up in there. I thought maybe you'd all gone out and forgotten to invite me. Instead, I find you here bickering like toddlers. It's Rakesh's fault. He refuses to bow down to my superior taste. This would be resolved if Isabella would acknowledge that I have brought the better entertainment. Did you have an opinion, Sally? Oh, no, you don't. Oh, wait, wrong <laughs> voice. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not getting in the middle of this one. Fine, fine. You people are lucky you've got me around, especially you, Isabella. I give her a wink and she blows a kiss. All right, give me the movies. I'll figure out what we're watching tonight. I grab the DVD cases from the two of them, taking a moment to look over while I consider. Isabella appears to be on some kind of TV sh show bootleg DVD. The back is mostly Spanish, but the word telenovela catches my eyes. Rakesh, on the other hand, has me in some kind of Bollywood movie. His case is m mostly in Hindi. I've been seeing a few posters like this around the web. The others are starting to look impatient as I mull it over. Okay, well, since apparently we did the wrong thing with Isabella last time, let's just get it back up. I make a big show of looking over both arms before I notice Isabella watching me intensely while she gently runs her tongue through her lips. Oh, okay. I roll my eyes at her, but she just laughs. All right, fine, you win, Isabella. What is this telenovela thing? Isabel actually claps with delight as she grabs the case back away from me and plugs it into the player under the big share TV. Oh, you guys are going to love this. I used to watch this show with my mother when I was growing up. Sorry about the blue things right there. Every day I'd get home from school and before I had my homework, mom would tune the TV and we'd watch for an hour. What follows is essentially a soap opera. The dialogue is all in Spanish and there aren't any subtitles, so Isabella has to translate everything for us. I don't watch soaps in languages I do know. I certainly have no idea what's going on here. But Isabella seems pretty happy. There are a couple of scenes that are funny just because of how dramatic that everyone's being on the screen. Overall, I don't get it, but everyone has a few good laughs anyway. Isabel is, of course, really into it. At one point, she even takes my hand to proclaim how romantic it is that one of the characters fell for the lady, even though she's really an evil twin. She doesn't let go of my hand for a while, though. It's kind of nice. Finally, the DVD runs out, and we all clap. Thanks, Max. That was a lot of fun. A real blast from my past, you know. No problem. I really enjoyed it. You'll have to tell me more about this some show some other time, okay? Ha, huh, I could probably teach you a whole class about it, but I'll fill you in sometime. Okay, so we got the 30 back. Okay, so I'm gonna just change up the schedule thing. Well, actually, no, I'll keep it like this. This is actually pretty good. Finally, a new class. I haven't actually met this professor yet. Oh, no. Hopefully they're easier going than my other professors are. This class looks easily easy on the syllabus, so I've got many fingers crossed. As the final chime sounds, the professor walks in and steps to the podium on the front of the class. Oh my gosh, she is scary. Oh no, she's she looks into my soul. I don't like her. Oh my gosh. Greetings, I'm Professor Merriweather! Welcome to Intro into Anatomy. I'm not, I'm not one for standing on Salamone, and we are all here to learn, so let's get right to it, shall we? Uh, no, no, we're not doing that voice, no. <laughs> The start says, let's get a couple of you down here for an example. Any volunteers? Yeah, 
she's gonna be like the Asian girl off of Pitch Perfect and whisper. I think that'd be better than sitting up here falling asleep. I don't sit up or anything, but I stick my hand up in the air. I certainly don't mind showing off my hot anatomy. Okay, you there. Your name? Max, ma'am. Good, good. Come down here and stand over here. <laughs> I picture a creepy old lady when I'm doing this voice. I start heading down the aisles to stand slightly to the left of the teacher. Alright, let's see who else we've got. Yes, yes, right there, Max. Who else? Ah, Butch, please come to the front of the class. A rather small guy with thick glasses approaches the front of the class. I always forget his voice. Okay, um... Hmm. I request... I have requested that you use my little name, talent. Please, that's all. Wait, wait, wait. Your name is Butch Pipsqueak. Are you sure that's not your older brother? The guy looks flustered, and I'll admit I'm doing my best not to smile. It's why I do go by my middle name. Nobody ever thinks that I'm a butch. You can have a very fast talking voice. Sorry, no nicknames. But. Moving on. Butch, you stand to my left. Butch grumbles, but we stand to our left. So, anatomy, we've all got it. This is an intro to it. I'm assuming all of you took high school biology class, right? I don't have to start with these basics. There are two humans. We've got that. Alright, you can never tell which one will stay to public school these days. So let's take a look at these two specimens. Two members of the same species, same ginger. So sexual. So sexual dime for a person is at a minimum. Still, we see how genetics and biology affect the members of the same species. One of these specimens is clearly working on definitely the muscle structure he was given was a little better. Ooh. Those should have the same in animal of parts, but you can see how those parts can be molded by different factors. I think she just told the class I'm cut. I should be mad, but I can definitely see some of this chicks in the crowd giving me a good look over, so I guess I'll give her a pass. The professor continues on like that for most of the hour, talking about the differences between the two of us. I'm pretty sure none of the class heard her. Where evolution likely, most likely played a part, what parts are mostly like holdovers from our oldest times? It would probably have been a fascinating lecture if I didn't have to be a living doll for her to point at the whole hour. Finally, she gestures for books and, and, and me to sit down. We head back to our seats and she finishes up her lecture. When the bell rings, everyone feels a, out a little overwhelmed. Oh, Max Butch, come here for a moment, will you? Damn, I was almost out too. Thanks for being my guinea pigs today. I've always nice and volunteers. Oh, I'm glad to see you stuck to one to two bush. Yes, well, I need credit. Thank Professor Merriweather. I hope I can count on both of you to volunteer to help me in the future. Hmm. Well, since this is our professor, we should probably suck up to her, so we'll be happy to help. Hey, Jeff, you just told a room of hot co-eds what a stud i am you need any more help like that you let me know i'm always happy to stud that was not at all the point of my lecture young man you should probably have paid closer attention but at least you'll be in track something <laughs> i know you type well you probably can use the extra credit all right go on i'll see you next time as we leave, Butch gives me a shrug, then a long-suffering sigh. I know what he means. This is going to be a long quarter.